Now, as the great Mark Twain pointed out, the difference between a tax collector and a taxidermist is that the taxidermist leaves you with your skin. Political right-wingers have argued for generations that the way to improve the economy is to free people from taxation. Now the Conservative peer Lord Saatchi has produced a plan to abolish corporation tax, the tax payable on a firm's profits for small companies. Paradoxically, he believes that cutting the tax would slash the deficit faster than levying it. Emily Maitlis has been gauging reaction to his theory in a popcorn factory. In her first term, Margaret Thatcher landed upon a policy that would change the political landscape. Right to buy affected six million people. Michael Heseltine remarked at the time, no single piece of legislation has enabled the transfer of so much capital wealth from the state to the people. Now another senior Tory, with a pedigree to match, thinks he's landed on the same kind of game changer. Not popcorn, but a policy some might see as similarly full of hot air. A move to abolish corporation tax for small businesses which this company, going for just three years and facing their first corporation tax bill, believe would make all the difference. Instead of spending money on corporation tax, we could spend it on employing more pastry chefs um, who hand make our popcorn. Um, we could invest more in machinery uh, to help us produce more popcorn across more amazing flavours as well. Now, free marketeers will cite the Laffer curve, that is, the relationship between the rate of taxation and the resulting levels of revenue that the government brings in. They'll argue that the lower the rate of taxation for businesses, the greater the overall benefit to the economy will be. They'll be persuasive, but will they be right? Let's test the claims. Lord Saatchi says the impact of the policy would be to reduce the deficit faster than predicted by the OBR. In this instance, I'd be very surprised if in the short run you got more revenue from something like this. In the very long run, if it changed the structure of the economy, then that might happen. What about the claim it would expand employment faster than predicted? They might increase employment, they might increase wages, they might just increase the profits or the take-home pay of the entrepreneurs. Or that it would increase competition and challenge cartel capitalism, i.e. the domination of the multinational. It might again in the long run help change the structure of the economy, but over the foreseeable future you're not going to break up the behemoths of capitalism as a result of something like this. It's a policy that doesn't come cheap, with an initial static cost of £10 billion, roughly what the abolition of stamp duty on homes would cost. Businesses say corporation tax is not even their biggest worry. Most businesses are struggling with business rates, probably more at the moment. Um, the, uh, in the rented accommodation, but the rented kitchens we're in at the moment here, uh, our big challenge is actually moving from a bill that includes business rates to our own dedicated facility. But the greatest worry, says the IFS, the TUC and others, is that it would increase the likelihood of tax avoidance. Once you've tasted the possibility of no tax on the increase in the value of the company and on the profits made, the opportunity for getting round the tax system altogether may just become, well, irresistible. Is this really what the Treasury wants to sign up to? Well, Lord Saatchi uh, is here with us now. How would you pay for this to start with? I'm going to answer that question. But before I do, as you've given me the honour of being one of your last interviews on Newsnight, this is going to would be you embarrassing, please, isn't it? Would you what accept is, what is this gift I, on behalf of all your victims? Uh, it is the road to serfdom. Very funny. It's the, Thank you. That's it's very the generous. Of first you. edition, and I hope oh, you like well, it. That's, uh, um, of terribly, a very important of a very important book in the history well, the, of British terribly, politics. It was. Wasn't this Margaret Thatcher's great text? Yes, I mean it's written by Friedrich von Hayek, and he is regarded as her mentor mm. in many ways. Yes. Oh, so, well, I should look forward to reading that. I thank freely you. confess and, I've not we, read it. We, we thank your you. victims, wish you well, well in whatever yeah, you do next. Very funny, all right. Now, <laughs> that would answer the question. <laughs> yes. How would you pay for this? Um, can I put this into... So, I'm going to ask that directly. I'll put this into this context, if I may. On Wednesday, 900 people are coming to the Centre for Policy Studies 40th anniversary, uh, the Thatcher Conference on Liberty and 31 think tanks from around the world. And they're coming and there's an uh, amazing galaxy of people coming in order to address the question of freedom and liberty, two words which have rather fallen out of fashion. Our aim in the Centre for Policy Studies, as in uh, Mrs Thatcher's aim in founding the Centre for Policy Studies, 
is to enhance freedom. We will be publishing on Wednesday some research, which, some polling, which people will find, I think, um, very distressing. It asks, um, who do you trust? Big companies or big government? It finds that people, 70% distrust big government and that 70% distrust big companies. Therefore, the, our aim is to um, increase people's freedom. And our method of doing that is to say that people who are um, starting up new companies or who are in small companies, that's companies with less than 50 people, will pay no corporation tax and, right. by the way, no capital gains tax these when these companies are sold. These companies pay, uh, pay uh, no corporation tax. Can I ask you the question again then? How do you pay for that? The cost of doing that is £11 billion. So it's a rounding error in the national accounts, but nevertheless, it's a, right. a significant sum. So your question is going to be, well, where's this money going to come from? That is what it is, yes. Yes, good. And the answer is that the answer, the, the, it comes from following the advice of uh, Deep Throat in Watergate. You remember that he said, follow the money. And what the economists who have produced this, um, this policy have done is to follow the money. That £11 billion, which is in that second lost to the Treasury, where does it go? That's what they've done. It doesn't mm. stay under people's pillows. That's in nobody's interest. Thanks to the Treasury, the Treasury has recently published its own report on what happens mm. when corporation tax is reduced. They find that the money goes in three directions. It um, is paid in dividends, which then include, involves more income tax. It goes in hiring more people, which means less welfare payments for the Treasury, and more income tax for the Treasury. And it goes in, the third direction is in further investment, which speeds growth. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we are going to say on Wednesday that this policy recovers the 11 billion pounds, and as the very nice man from the IFS said, can do that at a faster, can reduce the deficit but, faster than the OBR currently it's predicts. It's interesting you should choose this tax as opposed to the taxes that businesses care about more, like business rates and VAT, for example. Why not tackle those? Well, you could, I mean, one could try and abolish all tax, if you like, but what we're, <laughs> what we're, what we're interested in doing is abolishing two taxes. Corporation tax only on small companies with less than 50 employees. And capital gains tax so that people who sell their shares in small companies pay no tax. Now, if those two tax abolitions don't have a similar effect to the effect of buy your own council house, in terms of the cultural effect, the social impact, that would be very surprising. Wouldn't one effect be to, as was suggested earlier, I believe, uh, to encourage people to avoid tax because they would choose, oh, well, I don't pay any corporation tax, I'm a small business, why don't I just pay myself through my company as opposed to taking it as income and paying income tax? Well, the thing is that the, 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 this policy doesn't involve any new legislation or any new definitions of small companies. There are things called small companies now. Mm. There is a small company tax regime. Mm. There are different laws and different rules which apply to small companies as they exist now. And therefore, this is most certainly going to encourage people to be small companies. And you and honestly believe that this could be afforded at a time of financial stringency? Well, the, the cost is £11 billion, according to the it's figures. It's a lot of money. Fine. According to the figures, which the IFS has looked at, that money is recovered in four years. And that the, the well, result, the, in terms the of the Treasury, deficit, the, the Treasury don't think it can be recovered in four years. They think it'll take 20 years to recover 60% of it. We don't, we don't know what the Treasury is going to say about it. They're, they're considering it. They, the, the case that has been put to the Treasury, and which the IFS was commenting on, is that we are looking here for more freedom. This is, in effect, a social policy, not an economic policy. It's a social policy being brought into effect by economic means. And the, the, the effect of the social policy that we're looking at is um, for Britain to have a more get-up-and-go, dynamic, entrepreneurial culture. And if the abolition of corporation tax for small companies and the abolition of capital gains tax for small companies doesn't get people out of bed in the morning, nothing will. Lord Sarchi, thank you very much. And thanks for the thank book. You.